a mole of atoms is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power of atoms. To the nearest order of magnitude, how many moles of atoms are in a large domestic cat? The masses of a hydrogen atom, an oxygen atom, and a carbon atom are 1.0 daltons, 16 daltons, and 12 daltons respectively. Hint, cats are sometimes known to kill a mole. All right. So this is the, I've looked at a few physics textbooks before, and uh, this type of question is one that seems to come up a lot. Not, not, well, not a lot, but it seems like every chapter one of a physics textbook always has a question like this, which is ironic because I don't think I've ever once actually heard of a professor genuinely assigning such a question. Because a question like this requires a lot of estimation it requires a lot of it requires making assumptions uh, in some cases such as this it might require some background knowledge or just doing some research in the problem like for example in order to estimate the answer like uh, an answer to a question like this uh, you might want to have some skill with estimating the weight or the mass of objects in order to come up with a reasonable estimation for uh, the mass of a cat or if you don't have any knowledge at all on biology or chemistry, then you might not know whether or not an oxygen atom or a carbon atom or whatever is more commonly found in a cat. So stuff like, with, uh, with considerations like that, it's kind of easy to see why professors might not often assign something like this. But the question itself still illustrates some important aspects of physics, and not just physics, but science in general. Being able to make reasonable estimates that can help you determine whether or not your more specific calculations are reasonable at all is uh, definitely important, especially when conducting genuine experiments. So I can see why textbooks often include questions like these anyway. That said, let's actually see what we can do here. So the first thing we might want to get an idea for is what actually is the mass of a cat? And again, this is, uh, this is the sort of thing you might want to just do some research on or do a Google search for, or maybe just make kind of a guess. I'm going to try and uh, come up with an estimate in kilograms here. But because we're dealing with very, very rough estimates anyway, I'm going to try to keep uh, I'm going to keep this measurement in a, a single order of magnitude. So if you were to go on Google and look up the mass of a cat, then you get a variety of answers, but a lot of them seem to range from uh, from 7 kilograms up to about 15 kilograms. Uh, it's maybe a bit of a wider range than that, but a lot of the answers are in that smaller range. So to keep it in a single order of magnitude, I'm going to, for this estimate, I'm going to say the mass of a cat is equal to roughly 10 kilograms. Because uh, this is essentially equal to the order of magnitude of 10 to the first power. So 1 would be the order of magnitude here. Now, uh, we might also want to know the average mass of uh, an atom in a cat. So, uh, I'll just write that as m sub a. Now we're given a hydrogen atom, oxygen atom, carbon atom, and uh, there's a bit of range here in these numbers. Uh, if you know if you know a bit about basic biology, you might realize that carbon atoms are especially common in living organisms. So you might guess that the the mass might be closer to ten daltons. And if you're really not sure, you can take the average of these three numbers together, and the answer you get for that is also pretty much just about ten daltons. So for the average mass of uh, an atom and a cat, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approximate that as 10 Daltons. So we have two 10 values right here. And 10 Daltons, uh, because I'll try to get our values in kilograms here, uh, this is about equal to, and again I'm, again, I'm keeping this in no more than a single significant figure, uh, it's about equal to... 2 times 10 to the negative 26th kilograms. The actual conversion between 10 Daltons and kilograms is actually, I think, closer to about 1.7 times 10 to the negative 26th kilograms. But again, we're dealing with rough estimations here, so I'm not going to be too specific. I'm going to keep it as one significant figure. 
Now, if we want to uh, take these two numbers to get uh, roughly the number of atoms in a cat, uh, let's take the mass of the cat and divide it by the smaller mass of the atom. So let's say we've got, uh, so let's divide 10 kilograms for the mass of the cat divided by our number of, our, our mass of the atom. So divided by 2 times 10 to the negative 26th kilograms. And uh, taking our answer for that, and again I stress, these are estimations, uh, it's roughly close to uh, 5 times 10 to the 26th atoms. So there are about this many atoms in a cat then. But where does that get us? Because the question asks us to find not the number of atoms in a large domestic cat, but uh, the number of moles of atoms. Now what does that mean? Now as the question states in its first sentence, uh, a mole of atoms is equal to that many atoms, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. This is known as the Avogadro constant, or Avogadro's number, and the number is often used in chemistry, but uh, we don't need to know those details. The point is, a mole is that many atoms, so we'll want to convert from this number to however many moles that would be. So if we were to take that many atoms and divide it by the number of atoms in a mole, we might be able to get the number of moles from there. So let's uh, take 5 times 10 to the 26th atoms divided by the number of atoms in a mole, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And doing this division here to get our final answer, and again, I'm going to keep it in a single significant figure, then our answer is roughly equal to a thousand moles, one times 10 to the third moles. Or uh, you could also write this as uh, one kilo mole, a kilo mole. And because we're rounding to a single significant figure here, we're rounding to uh, the single or uh, the nearest order of magnitude, as the question specifically asks, because we're only making a rough estimation here based on research, then we can be satisfied with this answer and say that this is our answer for the problem. Now what this means is, how we could use that, is that if we were to be more specific, if we were to do a more detailed analysis of a specific cat, and if we had more information about the exact number of atoms, uh, the exact number of each type of atoms in a cat, and we were to use that to do a more detailed analysis, then this result that we got here uh, would help us in determining whether or not uh, our answer is reasonable. Like if we were to do a more detailed analysis, and we got a number of moles uh, closer to maybe somewhere between maybe 700 and uh, and 1500 or something, then we could say, yeah, that, that's sort of within, within this range. That is pretty close to this order of magnitude. So having an answer like this helps you determine whether or not your answer is reasonable. Now because this is an, uh, an even numbered question, there actually isn't an answer key entry for this in the back of the textbook because they only include odd numbers. Uh, but I think, I think the writers of the textbook knew that this would be kind of an obscure question with rather subjective answers. So the hint kind of gives it away by saying that the cats are known to kill a mole, which is basically what we got for our answer down here.